Hello, teachers. The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of the standards, intended pacing, and sample instructional strategies for Unit 5, making sense of fraction multiplication and division. In this portion of the video, we are going to review the AKS and Indicators of Achievement, or IOAs, for Unit 5. The AKS is the overarching knowledge and skills that students are expected to master. The IOAs are the learning objectives that allow students to demonstrate mastery of the AKS. The AKS and IOAs may not be taught in their entirety for the first time they appear in the instructional calendar. Some AKS or IOAs will appear multiple times throughout the year. In chapter two of the video, we will look to see how the AKS and IOAs in this unit are paced in detail. Unit five picks up where unit four leaves off with fraction operations. There are four IOAs, 3D, 3E, 3F, and a revisit to 5A. Under the AKS, you will find the indicators of achievement or IOAs. Again, we focus on the IOAs because this is how students show mastery of the AKS. Think of the IOAs as the building blocks of the AKS. We have also provided the state's coding at the end of each IOA, so when you are looking up resources on the Georgia DOE website, you are able to find the state IOA that is related to the GCPS IOA. In Unit 5, Students will continue to describe unit fractions and perform per operations by interpreting a fraction as a quotient, multiplying a whole number by a fraction, including fractions greater than one, and dividing unit fractions. With IOA 3A, students build on the understanding that a fraction is another representation for division and that those fractions may represent division with a quotient less than one. Here, students connect fractions with division, understanding, for example, that 5 divided by 3 is equal to 5 thirds and can be stated as 5 thirds or 5 divided by 3 to show the numerator divided by the denominator. Students show understanding of this IOA using words, pictures, and or numbers to solve word problems involving division of whole numbers leading to answers expressed as fractions or mixed numbers. Students are expected to demonstrate their understanding using manipulatives, drawing models, and explaining their thinking when working with fraction in context. These experiences lead students to the understanding that fractions can be thought of as a division problem where the numerator is what is being shared and the denominator is how it is being shared. With IOA 3D, Students will build on the work from previous grades with multiplication and division of equal size groups with whole numbers to now using multiplication to represent equal size groups of fractional amounts. They solve problems that involve the multiplication of a whole number by a fraction or mixed numbers using properties of operations in practical mathematical problems. Students make sense of fraction multiplication using concrete and visual representations, as well as strategies based in part whole reasoning. Students will also explain the meaning of a fraction as a multiple of unit fractions. IOA 3D is clustered with IOA 3E as students will reason about the relationships of fraction and products when whole numbers are multiplied by factors less than, greater than, and equal to one. Finally, with IOA 3F, students model and solve authentic problems using division of a unit fraction by a whole number and a whole number by a unit fraction. Students make sense of division of fractions from situations that involve a whole number and a unit fraction. And recall that division can be understood in terms of finding the number of equal size groups or finding the size of each group. Before solving a problem, students need to think through what information is given, asking questions like, what do you notice? What are we trying to figure out, the size of the group or the number of the groups? This will support students' actions into matching visual models with the question, which is another skill to be mastered in the, within this IOA. The pacing guide is an example intended to model how instruction of the AKS and IOAs in each unit may be facilitated. 
but teachers should design pacing to be responsive to the learning needs of their students. Let's take a look at the pacing guide for Unit 5. Unit 5 has a suggested pacing of about five weeks. There are 23 given days of instruction on the pacing guide, including the Unit 5 assessment. Take note of the bullets on the left side of the pacing guide. These show the learning progression of the AKS and IOAs for each unit and suggested manipulatives and tools. For Unit 5, you will need fraction tiles, fraction circles, and fraction squares. On the right side of the pacing guide, you will notice a number of provided resources aligned to the bullets on the left side of the pacing guide. Throughout the pacing guide, you will notice different lesson types. Traditional teacher-directed instruction lessons, as well as task-based learning lessons. For days where a task-based lesson is provided, you will see a blurb above that linked lesson. Additionally, you will see resources that have been pulled from the adopted Georgia Reveal curriculum resource for fifth grade. Some of these resources are not directly linked and can be accessed via G the GCPS portal. Lessons that have been adapted from Georgia Reveal are directly linked. You will also see resources from the Georgia DOE that have been ad adopted and linked as well. Unit 5 opens with four suggested days of IOA 3A. Students first engage in an inquiry lesson to concretely explore the concept of fractions as division using fraction manipulatives. Students will then progress to drawing visual models to solve word problems involving division of whole numbers as quotients of fractions or mixed numbers. Lastly, Students will engage in abstract thinking strategies to explain the meaning of a fraction as division of the numerator by the denominator. Students will have opportunities to connect previous exploration to the understanding that the numerator represents what is being shared and the denominator represents how it's being shared. Students should have many experiences model with modeling sharing problems before moving to this abstract thinking. Up next, we have IOAs 3D and 3E. They are clustered together as students will estimate by reasoning about the relationship between factors and products throughout the progression of multiplying with fractions and whole numbers. These IOAs are also paired with IOA 5A as students will be writing expressions to represent actual situations involving multiplication of a fraction and a whole number. There are eight suggested instructional days for these clustered IOAs. The first five days at the concrete to represent representational stage, students will multiply whole numbers by unit fractions and then whole numbers by any fractions, including fractions greater than one. Concrete experiences will continue to include fraction tiles, fraction squares, and fraction circles. At the representational thinking stage, students will um, use number lines and visual models. We then progress through the CRA learning progression involving multiplication of fractions um, and whole numbers using, as it relates to fractions of a set. We conclude multiplication involving whole numbers and fractions with students using any strategy to find products as well as two days of IOA 3E in isolation to explore and solidify understanding of mathematical situations involving multiplication and scaling. After fraction multiplication concludes, Unit 5 shifts to um, IOA 3F. There are eight suggested instructional days of division of unit fractions. Concrete experiences 
continue to utilize fraction tiles and fraction squares. Learning at the representational stage includes drawing visual models and constructing number lines. This progression alternates between whole numbers divided by a unit fraction and unit fractions divided by a whole number. And then we move to the abstract, representational abstract and then abstract. Once the progression moves to this thinking, students will be presented with mixed situations. Students will be able to use what they know about the relationship between multiplication and division to divide with whole numbers and unit fractions. Students will also have the opportunity to create their own story context when dividing with unit fractions. Again, students may solve problems in different ways and have the flexibility to choose a mathematical strategy that allows them to make sense of and strategically solve problems using efficient methods that are the most comfortable for and make sense to them. Chapter three, instructional strategies. This portion of the video will highlight specific instructional strategies that can be utilized in this unit. Please refer to the Analyzing the Standards, or ATS, for guidance on additional instructional strategies for each IOA. The ATS for each IOA is linked to the pacing guide at the beginning of each unit. These can also be found on the unit pages on Ecom. You may also notice that the ATS has been linked to the top of each lesson plan provided on the pacing guide. Let's begin by taking a look at IOA 3A, where students will explain the meaning of a fraction as division of the numerator by the denominator. Students will arrive at this thinking by solving problems involving division of whole numbers that lead to answers in the form of fractions or mixed numbers conceptually. So let's look at our first scenario. A farmer pours five gallons of water equally into four buckets. How can we, you determine the amount of water in each bucket? How much water is in each bucket? After reading the scenario, we really want to encourage our students to make sense of the problem and to estimate or reason about the quotient first. This will help eliminate number grabbing and other issues with problem solving when dividing in this unit. So let's make sure that we're modeling this thinking for our students. So here, we know that the farmer has some water. He is pouring or dividing into buckets equally. So I'll record this thinking as he has gallons of water and he's dividing them equally into buckets. Specifically, he has five gallons of water that he's dividing into four buckets and we don't know how much will be in each bucket. Now, just looking at this, I know that each bucket will hold more than a gallon of water because if there were five buckets of water, then each bucket will hold exactly one gallon of water. Well, since there's less than five buckets, each bucket will have to hold more than one gallon. This lets us know the amount of water or the quotient will be more than one whole, a, a whole gallon. Again, this thinking will help students evaluate the reasonableness of their answers. Now we need to figure out a way to determine the exact amount of water in each bucket. So first I'll model this using fraction tiles. Over there. I will use my one whole fraction tile to represent each gallon of water. One gallon, two gallon, three gallons, four gallons, five gallons of water. So again, we're trying to 
divide these five gallons of water into four buckets of water. Just going back to my initial thinking, I said that each bucket will hold at least one gallon of water. So we can say this is bucket one, this is bucket two, bucket three, bucket four. Now we have four buckets, four gallons of water, and we have one gallon remaining. Since we have four gallons, we can partition or decompose this one whole gallon into four equal parts. I'll use my fourths fraction tiles to represent each bucket. So now we have a whole gallon that we've partitioned into fourths. I know if I want to share this gallon equally, I can take each fourth and place in the bucket. The question asked us, how much water would be in each bucket if we shared the five gallons equally? Each bucket has the same amount of water and each bucket has one and one fourth gallon. So each bucket will have one and one fourth gallon of water. Now that answer is reasonable because at the beginning I estimated that each bucket would have more than one gallon and one and one fourth gallon is more than a gallon. That is one way to use manipulatives to represent dividing five gallons of water into the four buckets equally. Another way we could do this is to divide each of the five gallons into four parts to represent the four buckets, just like we did for the remaining gallon of water in the last example. So just like this, to save us some time, I went ahead and represented each gallon being divided into the four buckets using fourths. When modeling this for your students, you will let your students see you actually doing this, um, but I just needed to save us a little time. So I'll go ahead and remove these one whole tiles. Need a little more room. So now we will need to determine how much is in each of the buckets. Now the buckets are being represented vertically. This would be bucket one, bucket, and I'll go ahead and push those aside, bucket two, bucket three, and bucket four. We can see that each of the buckets have the same amount of water in them, so they are divided equally. Now we need to count them up to determine how much is in each bucket. Sorry, I'm gonna scoot this up just a bit to give myself enough room to record the amount. So in bucket one, we have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths are one whole and one fourth. So, and each bucket has the same amount. You can go through and count modeling that for your students, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths. Um, we can record that um, with an improper fraction or, you can see that or with a mixed number, one and one fourth. 
So each of those buckets have the same amount of water. Each bucket has five fourths or one in one. We can also draw a visual model to represent the five gallons of water being divided into the four buckets equally. I'll start by representing the five gallons of water. One gallon. Gallons. Three gallons. Four gallons. Five gallons. Now we need to partition each of those gallons into four equal parts to represent the four buckets. Right, and then I'll number this is for bucket one, bucket two, three, and four. And I'll go and do that for each of the gallons. Final gallon. All right, so now that we have each gallon represented, I need to go in and count up each one of those fourths. And we know they're fourths because they're four buckets and they're um, partitioned into four equal parts. I need to count how much is in each bucket. So again, here is bucket one. It's just like our last example, our concrete example. Here's bucket one. This is one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths. And then each one of those has um, the same amount of water. So, and you can model that for your students. Bucket two, one fourth, two fourth, three four, four fourths, five fourths gallon. Bucket three, one fourth, two fourth, three four, four fourths, five fourths gallons. And then finally, bucket four, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths gallons. So to answer our question again, each bucket has five fourths gallons of water. Now, for the abstract stage in the progression, students may be able to see that each of those four buckets will have an equal part or one-fourth of each of those five gallons of water. They can represent this thinking by saying that each of those buckets have one-fourth okay. Okay. Sorry. So one, two, three, four. Each one of those buckets have one fourth of each gallon. So bucket one would have one fourth of the first one plus one fourth of the second gallon plus one fourth of the third gallon plus one fourth of the fourth gallon plus one fourth of the fifth gallon, which they can then add these up. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth is five fourths. And they can do that for each one. Bucket two, one fourth of the first gallon, one fourth of the second gallon, one fourth of the fourth, and so on. And so, and they would continue that to see that each of those um, buckets would have one fourth of each gallon. 
So students are familiar um, with this, with adding with unit fractions, because they did that in fourth grade. So they know that it's going to equal to a five-fourth each one of those. Um, this is also the point where students um, at this level will start to begin to see that they are dividing what they are dividing is being represented by the numerator. So the what, what we're dividing are the gallons of water. What they're being, what they're dividing is being represented by the numerator and how they are dividing it, which is in buckets, is the denominator. So this means that if there are five gallons of water being divided into four buckets, then five divided by four is equal to five fourths, which is the extent of this IOA. Now, remember, students must explore and experience this IOA conceptually with concrete manipulatives and virtual model, visual models first before moving to this abstract thinking. Up next, we have the clustered IOAs 3D, multiplying whole numbers by any fraction, 3E, reasoning about the relationship of factors and products, and 5A, writing expressions involving multiplication of fractions and whole numbers. Prior to the adoption of the new standards, students in fourth grade multiplied fractions by a whole number. So for the transitional year only, this IOA will be familiar. Another fact to remember about the changes with the new standards, students will only multiply fractions, including fractions greater than one and whole numbers. This differs from the previous standards for fifth grade where students were responsible for multiplying any fraction by any fraction. So remember, this IOA is limited to multiplying any fraction by, a whole, num by whole numbers only. So let's get started. Here's our scenario. Max got a puppy for his birthday. He bought four small containers of food for his puppy. Each container holds two thirds pounds of food. How many pounds of dog food does Max have for his new puppy? Just as the last IOA, we want to encourage making sense of problems and estimating or reasoning about our solution. This time, it's very intentional as this directly addresses IOA 3D, where students will reason about the products when multiplying a whole number by a fraction less than one, greater than one, or equal to one. So again, ensure that we're modeling this thinking for our students. Here we have a, a person who purchased dog food for their puppy. They bought four containers of less than a pound of food. We have to determine how many pounds of food were purchased. This tells me that the exact amount of food should be less than four pounds of puppy food because four containers of one pound would equal four pounds of food. Since we have less than a pound of food, two thirds pounds to be exact, each of the total amount, uh, the total amount of food will be less than four pounds. I'll use this estimate to determine the reasonableness of my exact answer a little bit later. So first, let's use um, fraction tiles to figure out how much food Max has for his new puppy. So I first want to represent each container of food. I'll do that using my one-third pieces to represent it. That's the first container, second container, third container, and finally, the fourth container. So now that we have the food represented, students can count each of the third of pound of food to find the total. So one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds um, pounds of food, or they can count by groups of two. So two thirds, four thirds, six thirds, 
eight thirds. They can record this thinking by making or writing a repeated addition sentence. So for the first container, two thirds, second container, third container, and the fourth container. Again, two thirds, and we add those together, two thirds, four thirds, six thirds, eight thirds, X is e so this is equal to eight thirds. Now, again, students added fractions with like denominators last year. In fifth grade, we'll connect this background knowledge here as a strategy to multiply. When we add equal groups of a value, we can express the value um, as multiplication, which ties directly into IOA 5A. Here we have four groups of two thirds. So we could write four groups of two thirds is the same as four times two thirds. Students can also be given a model like this one and be asked what expression can be written to represent it. So once the connection of relating repeated addition to multiplication, students may then start recording their thinking using multiplication equations in future problems. So here we have, again, four times two thirds equals a known known amount. We now know that that amount of food is eight thirds. We can write eight thirds as a, keep this improper fraction, or we can write it as a mixed number. We can show this concretely by combining the one third pieces to make the least amount of holes. Let's add here, my expression. Uh, for just, equation for just a second. So the, now we have three thirds, and then I'll combine these to make three thirds or one whole, and then we have these. I'll use my one whole tiles to show our holes. So now we have one whole, two holes, two and two thirds holes. So this back over a bit. Four times two thirds is equal to eight thirds, which is equal to two and two thirds. Now, eight thirds or two and two thirds pounds of food is a reasonable solution as our estimate that we did at the beginning of our problem was a less than four pounds of food. And two thirds pounds, eight thirds, is less than four pounds of food. For representational thinking, we can draw visual models to rep help us represent what's going on in our situation. So for this, I will draw four rectangles to represent my four containers, just like I had for my fraction, using my fraction tiles. So I like to draw the total amount of food. And then I'm going to partition this total box, this large box, into four equal parts to represent each container. Partition it in half, and then partition those halves into half. And then this is container one, container two, container three, container four. Now, we know that each of those containers hold a fraction of a pound, two thirds to be exact. So I will partition each container into thirds and shade two of those three equal parts and label each. Now that's into thirds and now I need to shade in two thirds and then label it. Container two into thirds, shade the two thirds and we're going to label it and do that for each of the four containers. Finally, my last container.
Now, now that we have our model, our visual model, from there, we can write in a repeated addition sentence and the multiplication sentence. So we have our first container. Push this up just a bit. Plus our second container. Third container. Fourth container of food is equal to an unknown amount. Again, um, just like with the last uh, strategy, students may count by unit. So one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds. Um, or they can count by groups of two thirds. And that is where our multiplication sentence will come in. Four groups of two thirds is the same as four times two thirds. And we know that this is equal to eight. Thirds. Now, we can write um, the improper fraction again, leave the improper fraction, or we can um, write it as a mixed number. Now, we do this by grouping three of the thirds together, just like we did with our fractions, but this time we're going to use a different color marker to show that grouping. So we have one third, two thirds, three thirds. That's one whole. And we have one third, two thirds, three thirds. That's one whole. And then we have two thirds remaining. So eight thirds is equal to two and two thirds pounds of food. Now, once students have had experiences, multiplying at both um, the concrete and representational stages, students can start to make those abstract connections. One way to do this is to use the same strategy that they have used in previous grades to multiply um, using whole numbers, which is repeated addition. This is also why it's important to connect that repeated addition to all the other um, stages in the learning progression as well. So students will solve this problem by writing a repeated sentence, repeated addition sentence, just as we've been doing all along. So they start with their expression or the equation, four times four containers with two thirds pounds of food in each is equal to some unknown amount. We can then write the repeated addition sentence to show the amount in each one two thirds container, third container, fourth container. Again, students can count um, the each, each group. So we have two thirds, four thirds, five thirds, excuse me, two thirds, four thirds, six thirds, eight thirds pounds of food. Now, this is an improper fraction. We can write this um, as a mixed number by subtracting holes. So we have the eight thirds and we can subtract those three thirds until we have a proper fraction. So we have eight thirds minus one whole or three thirds and that gives us five thirds. This is still an improper fraction, so we'll subtract another whole, which is two thirds. Now we have a proper fraction. So we have one whole, two wholes, and two thirds. So eight thirds is equivalent to two and two thirds pounds of food. So max has two and two thirds pounds of food. Finally, we have IOA 3F, dividing with unit fractions and whole numbers. This IOA is the same as last year. The parameters are still dividing a unit fraction only by a whole number and a whole number by a unit fraction. 
A very important detail to remember about this IOA is that students tend to struggle less with knowing how to divide than they do with knowing what to divide. Again, a great way to get ahead of this is to first make sense of the scenarios and then reason about the solution or the quotient. Asking and answering questions like, what are we dividing? How are we dividing it without numbers? And what are we trying to determine? The size of the groups or the number of the groups will support student actions when writing equations and constructing models that are specific and applicable to the problem they are solving. So with that being said, I want to model just thinking through each type of situation first when dividing a unit fraction by a whole number and dividing a whole number by a unit fraction. Then I will model the CRA pro process using one of the scenarios. Let's look at our first one. Puppies Trixie and Saint drink one fourth a gallon of water after meal. If they both drink the same amount of water, how much does each puppy have in their water bowls after their meals? So first, to make sense of the problem, I want to first ask myself, what is going on without the numbers? Well, I know some puppies are sharing water equally, and we have to determine how much water each pup will need. So we're dividing a fractional amount of water, the total amount of water we have, into equal groups. We need to determine the size of those groups, which will be a fractional amount. Now, this makes sense being that we start with a fractional amount to begin with, of water to begin with. Here's how I'll record this thinking. I'm dividing the amount of water they have Dividing that by the number of pups. We don't know the fractional amount of water that they both will have yet, but we do know that the amount of water to be shared is a fractional amount. So, now that I've reasoned through this situation without numbers, I'm ready to include the numbers from the situation. So the amount of water that they have is a fourth of a gallon. They are sharing or dividing that fourth of a gallon with two pups. Again, we don't know the fractional amount of water that each pup will have. But we do know that the water to be shared is a fourth of a gallon. No more, no less. This tells me that the quotient or the size of amount the, of the amount they should have should not only be a fractional amount, but it should also be less than a fourth of a gallon. This reasoning will help students write the correct equation to represent the situation, which in turn will help them construct an appropriate model. It also helps them to assess the reasonableness of their solution. Now let's move on to the next scenario. eats one-fourth a cup of berries with her dog food each day. If there are two cups of berries, how many days can she eat berries with her food? Again, I want to make sense of what's happening in the situation by asking questions. The first one is, what's going on in the situation? A puppy eats the same amount of berries each day, and there's a certain amount of cups given. We are to determine how many days are the number of the groups of the servings of berries there are in a given amount of cups. So simply put, we're just trying to figure out how many servings there are in the amount of cups given. Here's how I can record this equation um, without numbers. So we're trying to determine, we don't know, 
the number of servings, there are in a given amount of cups. So number of serve, uh, the, I'm sorry. So we have, we don't know the groups of servings there are in a total amount or a given amount of cups. Now that we've made sense of what's going on without those exact numbers, it's time to include them. So again, we don't know the number of one fourth cup servings there are in two cups of berries. Now we know from multiplying with whole numbers in previous grades that we can use division to determine an unknown factor. We can use that thinking now to write a division equation to help us solve this scenario. So we have two cups of berries and we want to know how we want to divide them into equal groups of one fourth to determine how many days um, Trixie can eat the berry. So here we have two different scenarios that call for two different equations even though they share the same digits. Students may have to choose which equation accurately represents a specific situation. Another thing, I strategically chose this example because we find that students naturally grab numbers in the order that they are presented. Here, if they would have done that, their equation would have been incorrect. So, Let's make sure we they, they naturally grab those numbers. So let's just make sure that we're providing students with an opportunity to experience or to grapple with this, um, because this will help you know who has this misconception and it can afford you, afford you the opportunity and the time to address it before students are expected to show mastery on assessment. Now I will model the learning progression of the first scenario, asking us to determine the amount of water in Trixie and Saint's water bowl if they share one-fourth a gallon of water equally. We have already made sense of the situation, so I'll move into determining the solution using fraction tiles. I want to represent the whole gallon of water with one whole, with the one whole fraction tile. Cups only have one-fourth a gallon of water to share. So this lets me know that the gallon was partitioned into fourths. So I'll use the fourth fraction tiles to show how the gallon was partitioned. And I'm going to turn over the other three-fourths to show that this is what we're work. This is the size of the, um, this is the amount that we're working with. As I mentioned before, we know that there is one fourth total, um, one fourth a gallon of water for the pups to share equally. This means that the amount each pup will get is less than a fourth of a gallon. I want to use this thinking along with previous learning of comparing fractions to strategically choose my fraction tiles that can be used to show two equal groups of one fourth. Teachers, you can model using fractions that are less than a fourth that won't cover the same area or is equivalent to one fourth. For example, let's say six. We know that six are less than fourths, but when we try to show two groups of one six, we can clearly see that that is greater than one fourth. We can use tenths because a tenth is less than a fourth. So that's a reasonable amount that each pup will receive. However, if we have two groups of one tenth, we see that there is some still remaining. Eventually, you will see that eighths is a reasonable answer because it's less than one fourth. 
but also we see that a two groups of one eighth or two eighths is equivalent to one fourth. So we can use partition the fourths into eighths. Now, again, we're going to cover up, we're going to represent the entire gallon to show how it's being partitioned, but we're going to cover up the parts that we're not using. All right. We also know that students have had um, prior experience with folding paper and creating fraction tiles to show equivalency, as well as creating equally partitioned number lines and visual models. Um, so they've had this experience of partitioning fourths um, into half to create eighths. So some students may um, use that reasoning to choose the eighth um, fraction tiles. So here's something to um, think about as well. Some students mistakenly say um, the amount of water each pup will receive is two eighths gallon. Just remind them um, that two eighths is equivalent to four to one fourth. And the question asked us to um, find the amount that each pup will get. The answer of two eighths is not reasonable because it's the same amount or equivalent to one fourth. So we can clearly see that Trixie will receive one eighth and Saint will receive one eighth gallons of water. So our answer is one eighth. And we know that this answer is reasonable because, again, we said that each pup will um, receive less than a fourth amount when we were reasoning through the situation. And one eighth is less than one fourth. We can also represent this learning with a visual model. In order to show the one-fourth a gallon of water that Trixie and Saint share, I will need to represent the entire gallon. So I will draw a rectangle to represent the gallon. I know, next, I want to represent the amount the pups have. One fourth. I will partition the gallon into first into half, and then I'll partition each of those halves into half to create fourths. I know, again, that we're only talking about one-fourth, so I'll shade the fourth that Trixie and Saint are sharing in, in a different color. I know the dogs are, and I'll label one fourth. I know that the dogs are sharing this fourth a gallon of water equally. So I can partition this fourth into two equal parts. So this is Trixie's share, and here is Saint's share. I'll also need to partition the rest of the gallon in order to determine the total number of parts the gallon has been divided into. I'll partition each of the fourths in half. When I count up each of the parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I see that I now have eight. So each one of these represents eight. So Trixie will receive one eighth gallon of water and Saint will receive one eighth gallons of water. Now at the abstract stage, students can use what they've learned about partitioning and dividing and in this particular case, having to solve. 
Uh, however, I want to say this, students should use strategies that are the most efficient and make the most sense to them. So if your students are not ready for this abstract level or phase of learning in the progression, it's okay. They may choose strategies such as visual models like this one or number lines to solve. But for students who are ready, here's what a sample um, of student thinking could be. So I want to use what I know about dividing to help me think through this. I know that the pups have a total of one fourth gallons of gallon of water to share equally between the two of them. If I split one fourth or each fourth of the gallon into two equal parts, eighths are formed. So each pup will receive one eighth of a gallon in their bowl. F would equal one eighth. This thinking was modeled throughout the learning progression at the concrete stage with the fraction tiles and then at the representational stage with visual models. And it can even be modeled with number lines as well. Because of this work, students will be able to think, some students will be able to think abstractly to determine the solution. So which strategy? In mathematics, the emphasis is on the reasoning and thinking about the quantities within mathematical context. Specific mathematics strategies for teaching and learning are not mandated by the Georgia Department of Education or assessed on state or federally mandated tests. Students may solve problems in different ways and have the flexibility to choose a mathematical strategy that allows them to make sense of and strategically solve problems using efficient methods that are the most comfortable for and make sense to them. It is critical that teachers and parents remain partners to help each child grow to become a mathematically literate citizen. These standards preserve and affirm local control and flexibility. Thank you for watching. Please use your phone to scan the QR code on the screen or go to the website shown to get your completion credit in PD&E.